Hi everyone, welcome to Tomahawk's website fitness program for your tourism business. Firstly, I'd like to thank every one of you for joining. Um, I'm just going to connect Gina. She's obviously in her home and make sure that she's able to speak to you all today as well. So bear with me one moment. Gina, have we got you? Yes, I'm here, Morena. Fantastic. So firstly, I'd like to thank everyone well for welcoming us welcoming us into your home um understanding that traditionally we'd be sitting in your office um, or you'd be sitting in your office and we'd be speaking to you there but we're in a different time and we will be coming to you from our lounge to your lounge so hopefully you're all feeling well sane and staying safe um, we want to send a huge thank you to everybody who registered today. We had over 250 people register, which is amazing. It's great to see that everybody in the industry are looking to support each other and collaborate and really get together um, during this time. So huge, um, huge thanks and huge love to all of you. Um, what I'm going to do, because there's a couple of questions that have come through, people asking if they'd like, if they could share or invite people to the webinar. Um, people can still register if you want to share the link with anybody who's a last minute registration, 100% do so, um, and they can join at any time. Um, Equally, this webinar is being recorded, so everything that we talk about in this session, as well as the slides, will be shared with you um, and anybody who wasn't able to join uh, live uh, to watch at a later date. So just to confirm, you've got Gina Palladini, our Marketing Director here at Tomahawk, and myself, Renee, our Marketing Manager, talking to you over the next 45 minutes. Um, we're going to work through your website fitness program and how we can help or how you can help your business during COVID-19. So just to reconfirm, this is being recorded. Um, and the reason that we've done this as a webinar as opposed to a meeting so that we can see all your beautiful faces um, and you can see my face and Gina's face. I'm not going to say my beautiful face because I feel <laughs> the home has um, made me a little bit lazy. Um, but just to confirm that the reason we've done it this way is so that we do have all your email addresses and can share this with you uh, for later viewing. But before we kick off, and as any of you have done a webinar or a workshop or a session with us in the past, will know that the team at Tomahawk um, love snacks and they've probably met our friend Daisy the Cow. So this is an amazing opportunity um, to make sure you're familiar with Zoom, you know where everything is, and we're going to ask you to head on to the chat panel and share with us what your favorite isolation go-to snack is. So last week I would have said that mine was a cocktail, of course after work hours, but this weekend I um, smashed out some new sourdough loaves so this week i think my go-to snack is going to be freshly toasted sourdough so head on over share what's going on in your snack department and we will um look honestly it looks like everybody's been able to find this and i'm getting really hungry so thankfully it's almost lunchtime. there's lots of dips there's popcorn chocolate hummus okay this is amazing loving it great inspiration if anyone was looking for some inspiration, head on over. Oh, crunchy but oh, peanut butter and maple oat slice. The cow's name is Daisy. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's, it, it, it's logical that it's Daisy. We love Daisy the cow. Um, can Amy share her gin infused olives somehow? <laughs> Yeah, if, if we reach out to you after this asking for recipe inspiration, um, <laughs> we'll be sure to share with everyone. So I feel a little inspiration idea coming on here. So um, we might be in touch with some of you because these are amazing. Oh my God. Okay, stop. I'm going to stop looking. I'm going <laughs> to kick into this. I'm getting really hungry. My stomach may start grumbling because um, there is just deliciousness everywhere. 
So to confirm, over the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about getting the basics right, why search engine optimization is so important and more so during this time, talk about the familiar and the new domestic traveler, uh, work together on creating what a content calendar might look like, how to schedule some of that stuff, and then some great free tools that we love to use um, here at Tomahawk. So I'm going to pass you over to Gina. And she's going to take you on the next few um, slides. Thanks, Renee. Um, we just wanted, okay, first let me say thanks again. I know um, Renee's already thanked you, but thanks for joining us today, you guys. We understand um, that this is a crazy, um, messy, and um, um, unnerving time. And I just wanted to start off by sharing with you um, my personal mantra and what the company's mantra is right now. And that's focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Um, because right now what we can focus on is how we respond to this situation, both personally um, and as a business. Um, and taking that thought um, is what gave us the inspiration to, to put together this webinar right now, is what could we be telling the industry, our customers, what they can be focusing on right now? And what we can be focusing on and what we're focusing on at Tomahawk is the performance of the website. Because reality is when travel does rebound in whatever form um, the travel will rebound is in, it's your website where people are going to be able to find you. Um, and this is the time where perhaps you have um, some more time available um, to learn a skill if you've never worked on your website before. Um, and so that's why we're like, okay, let's focus on what we can do. What we can do is ensure our website is going to be singing about our business and impressing Google. So that's what today is all about. Um, so let's start off by getting the bare basics right, okay? Here's just a couple of things. Some of them seem really obvious, but let's punch through them really quickly to make sure that everybody has already done this for their business. On your website, if you've currently put up um, a notice to say that you're um, temporarily closed, and what have you done on your reservation system to say that you um, can't take bookings right now? Um, any activity you do right now is considered online activity. Google will see that you're active online, so it's going to help with your online performance. Make sure you're, you've logged into your Facebook, you've updated your hours. Maybe you have a different phone number that people need to call on. Um, please make sure that you've created a post to say that you're temporarily closed, but you cannot wait to welcome back your customers. Click the upper right hand corner where those three dots are. Click to pin it so it stays at that as that top post in your Facebook. And be hyper, hyper engaged at this time. So Instagram, Facebook, Google My Business, LinkedIn, all of the different platforms online, like other tourism industry posts, comment on them. If any of your customers are in, um, in contact, find the time. Um, to really be hyper engaged right now. Um, people will, will feel your brand um, is still alive by you being engaging. Google My Business, it is the backbone. Anybody that's done any of our workshops hear this mantra. Um, Google My Business is the backbone to Google Travel. Google Travel, when travel rebounds, um, is going to be um, vital to the success of all of our businesses. Make sure that you've gone in and updated your opening hours. You're gonna to see to the right a little screen grab, and that's because Google My Business has created an entire new post type, which is COVID-19. So anybody who isn't an accommodation, because Google My Business doesn't let accommodations um, do posts, um, if you don't know why, you can ask that as a question. If we've got time at the end, we can explain why. Um, but everybody else, please use this new um, COVID-19 update um, post um, function. Um, and when you change your um, opening hours to temporarily closed, it will not affect your, um, your Google um, search engine 
um, results, there might be a little pop-up that says, hey, if you're temporarily closed, this might affect your business. Just know that that is a bug in Google My Business right now. That lower right-hand corner screen grab is letting you know that Google recognizes that that bug still exists and they will not slap your hand if you change your opening hours to temporarily closed. Um, if you've changed any services, you guys can read this. I don't need to read it for you. Um, and also, so that you know, Google My Business is not publishing any new reviews or questions and answers right now. They too have had to reduce their hours and their um, team's focus. So one of the things that the team at Google My Business is not doing is publishing reviews or Q&As. When the team is back on board, anything that any reviews that are being posted right now, they will all um, go -ba 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 That was a really bad um, little sound effect. <laughs> For all of your reviews, we'll just start piling in. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to giggle at my sound effects. <laughs> um, so why um, is Tomahawk um, suggesting that you should be looking at your search engine optimization now? And why is it so important now? Um, because um, organic search, so not paying for it. This isn't for you doing Google ads and paying for it. Organic search, which we all need right now, Tomahawk needs it, you're going to need it because there's not a lot of income for, you know, people to be paying for Google ads right now. This is what's going to help everybody's business is the organic ranking for your, um, for your company. And it is a zero sum game. What that means is that wherever you get, a, wherever one of your um, competitors gain, you're going to lose. Wherever you gain, they'll lose. It's that back and forth, living, breathing, um, ranking change. So everything that you can do to help your website now is going to ensure that you are ready to absolutely hit the mark when travel rebounds. Ooh. And Renee's going to get the slide to move. <laughs> Um, it's really unique of not sitting next to each other and staring at a screen and doing this remotely. So thank you, Renee. <laughs> um, so for those of you that have heard the term SEO and search engine optimization and not sure what it is, let's just look at it really, really quickly. Um, the search engine optimization is basically the science behind increasing good quality free organic tra um, traffic to your website. And there are lots and lots of tools and tricks and tactics and work that goes into increasing the ranking of your website. Um, and there are, they break it down into three main components, um, as you can see in that little diagram. But for today, what we're gonna talk about, what you can do right now is really concentrate on number two, which is that, that genuine fresh content. Because this is something that any of us could be doing. You don't need training um, to, be, um, to be honest, authentic, genuine um, content that you create right now is the best kind. So that's why we're saying focus on what you can control. What you can control is the content on your website and when you control the content on your website, it's going to help with your Google resu results. So this is what we all can be doing for our companies right now. Fantastic. So that's a really great um, overview of what SEO is. And what we now want to look at is who your customers were and understanding that your customers, um, or traditionally who your customers were, still exist. They're still around. Um, they're at home and they're currently just dreaming of where they can be going next, where they are going, to, what they're going to be doing when they get to New Zealand, um, and what they, um, yeah, what they want to, to see and do. So generally just being inspired. So now is a really great opportunity to be looking at what you're doing 
So we so when people are online, they are being inspired and people can start planning what they're going to be doing when they um, are able to explore again. So with that in mind, um, understanding that you are also a consumer, let us know or tell us where you're currently dreaming of going. Is it that you're dreaming of a trip um, down to Taranaki to visit family? Or is it that you're dreaming of heading to Queenstown so that you can uh, enjoy the mountains? So let us know, head over to that chat and let us know where you're dreaming of going. So where are you dreaming of going, Gina? Well, um, where am I going? Um, I, I'm desperate to go see my family <laughs> in California. Um, to be honest, um, I guess this time um, just makes me really want to see my family, but that's not going to happen for a while. Yeah. So um, um, probably the next thing that I want to do is just jump on a boat and go to Waiheke and go to my favorite vineyards and go eat a wonderful lunch at Padere Preshi or, or something. Um, so I guess the whole point, um, you know, what Renee and I are trying to say is that um, your customers aren't gone. Um, they're just at home and, and dreaming. So don't feel like um, you dreaming up and creating content is a waste of your time mm -hmm. because People are online now more, oh yeah, catch up with good friends in Fidianga. Um, I hear you, Lauren. I lived in Fidianga for 15 years. I really, I really miss Fidianga too. Yeah, there's a, so lot, of, a lot of people saying visiting friends and family. I think yeah. I'm missing, yeah. missing those usual trips that you would be having, um, taking out the caravan, going to check in on your parents um, is going to become a really key part of what our travel landscape starts to look like. Wow. And that leads into the segue of um, so, what we're going to talk about next. Look at that. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> so understanding that uh, what we've got ahead of us is still unknown, but we uh, have taken some inspiration from what is being said in the media, um, what we're hearing from some of our customers, what we're hearing about some of the industry experts that we are following both domestically and internationally. Yeah, um, yeah this was also, sorry Renee, this, so this is also um, what what you and I have been reading what's happening in Italy in the discussions um, um, in Italy, in the US, that um, this is some of the mindset that they have in other countries too. So it's kind of nice that the same conversations are happening here. Yeah, definitely. So you'll see that we're starting around hyper-local, so people within, literally in your backyard, um, and moving right through to people exploring a little bit further, going into, um, escape for a weekend, looking at going for maybe a week, and then that inter-island type travel. And it's going to come down to people uh, feeling safe and feeling comfortable to do so. Um, so this is the evolution that we're expecting to see over the coming few months. Um, and it aligns with like what Gina said, what we're seeing uh, happen in or talking about in other destinations as well. And look, at it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting um, to watch because it's it's going to be um, the the mental side of of, of people's um, comfort zones. Mm -hmm. It's going to be you know perhaps we read um, and and heard from the government that alert levels could be changed um, in areas and nationally. So and the alert levels could change. And obviously, it's going to have a lot to do on discretionary income. A lot of people, um, um, paychecks um, and jobs <laughs> are changing. So the discretionary income, the alert levels, and in the mindset is going to is going to play a big role. Um, so we just have to be prepared for all of those different scenarios. Yeah, definitely. Um, Gina, just a little shout out. The team at Waikiki Escapes look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Great. So, Gina, I'm going to let you take the lead on this slide as we continue to move through and share some helpful cool. with everybody cool. listening in. Cool. So, look at we've been talking about what you can do um, right now and why creating content for your website is so important. And so, how do you get started to do that? Because this will be a new thing for a lot of you. Um, 
Um, and we have to remind ourselves every day at Tomahawk what the process, not remind ourselves, but kind of ensure that we're taking the same steps through the process. So to create a content strategy, what you're going to do is you start off by choosing an audience. And we're going to talk about those audiences next. And then because right now um, we believe it's important that you're creating content um, for the dream and the research stage of the travel um, process. So the travel purchase process is a five stage process where people first dream about where they're going to go. Then they research or plan. Then they book that trip. Then they experience it with you. And then they share the good, the bad, and the ugly, hopefully mostly the good, about that trip. So that's when they do the reviews. That's when they do their social media posting. So if you've never heard the five stages of travel, um, we are going to be including something in that with the follow-up notes with this. So right now, our opinion is, is it's best for you to be creating content for that dream and research stage of the travel process. So if you're thinking of the audience and you're thinking of the dream and the research stage, have a look at your website and the content and identify where the gap is. We're gonna take you through examples next. And then comes the fun part. Once you know what the gaps are, you do the brainstorming. You think of themes and ideas on how you can create content. And this is the really fun part. Um, I can talk about this forever. I'm, I'm a marketer. I did, this is my, the, the most exciting part for me. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna match those themes and ideas to the types of content you can create. And then you go, okay, I've got my theme and I've got the type of content. Now, where does that belong? Is it just for my website? Can I also share it on LinkedIn? Is it appropriate for social media? And then celebrate because you just created a content strategy and it's something that you can focus on and improve for your business right now. Very exciting. <laughs> we think so, because we're marketers. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to that brainstorming part. You guys, we're going to be sending you this. Um, so, you know, you don't need to listen to my voice. You could sit there and read what we have here, but I'm just going to pull out a couple to talk about. We've already talked about that there's going to um, need to be a lot of new domestic product for a lot of businesses. So creating a totally new domestic product with domestic pricing because a lot of Kiwis think that traveling around New Zealand's expensive. Um, so you might have to look at that. Um, so if you remember back on the slide, we talked about hyper travel is going to be um, hyper local travel is going to be the first um, one off the mark. So maybe you can create a new product just for your locals. And then maybe you can create another one that's for Kiwi wide. Okay. Um, there's other ideas here. A really, really fun thing that you can be doing is comparing your current product to a popular overseas destination or activity. What do I mean by that? So let's say that you are in the Abel Tasman area and you can compare the beaches and the activities um, of Fiji to what people could do in Abel Tasman. So you could create a piece of content that says, um, um, don't travel to Fiji this winter, um, back your backyard and visit Abel Tasman. And then talk about, um, you know, and you can do spa locally instead of spa there. You can go to the beach here instead of going to the beach there. We've got great cocktails here. So you get the idea behind that one. Um, another thing to think about during this time, you guys, is the OTAs, okay? We've been having lots of conversations and um, because we have a booking engine, um, we've got a lot of people coming to us asking, you know, do I still need to be on OTAs? What can I be doing? And there's some, this isn't really interesting conversations um, and place and time for you to um, take back your customers in our humble opinion. Um, I don't know if you guys have read about how um, when Italy's cases um, erupted so quickly and those people who had booked on booking.com and Expedia and some of the OTAs, they couldn't get in touch with them um, to find out the cancellation policies and what they could do. So for the first time in many years, travelers 
we're contacting the hotels directly and going, hey, Mario, I actually have an uncle named Mario who runs a hotel in Italy. Um, hey, Mario, um, I booked through booking.com, um, but I can't get through to them. What can I do about my reservation? And Uncle Mario said, hey, you know, I know it's really, really tough. Um, it's really bad for us because, you know, we've got nobody coming. And over 50% of the people, the, the travelers who contacted the accommodations directly, told the hotels and the accommodations that they could keep the bookings if they'd honor the credit for over a year. Now think about that. That meant that those accommodations could keep the money and they knew that they had customers coming. And what there's really great articles all over online um, about this. So there's a really good one on Focus Right and another one on Skift. Um, and what, these in the follow-up email, Gina? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We'll 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 do we'll do those two, the the two best ones. Um, and what they were saying, the hotel providers, the accommodation providers were saying how much a they enjoyed having the direct contact with the customers again, and that it allowed this whole new level of human to human contact again. And then this um, unfortunate um, incident happened where Booking.com. I'm sorry, booking.com, but I'm not saying anything that isn't true, um, decided to do a blanket um, policy and they refunded everybody who had a booking with the hotels in Italy. Um, and so this was devastating for the hotels who were able to keep some of those credits. So 2000 it's over 2,000 um, hotels and accommodations in Italy have um, signed an MOU that they will not be signing up with Booking.com um, post COVID-19 because Booking.com, unfortunately, in this situation, thought only of the customers and not of the suppliers. So where am I going with this kind of monologue that I'm saying is that this is the time where you can, we can all stop and reset our businesses and how the distribution might change and how you can take back customers. OTAs are still going to have um, a purpose, but this is where you can really stop and rethink and, and bulk up your content and bulk up um, a book direct strategy and, and, and really take back um, control of your business. Sorry, that was really long, but I thought it was important. I just want to confirm that OTA is online travel agent. Oh. Uh, so the likes of booking.com, Expedia, via tour, and things like that. So oh, by the way, Airbnb did the same thing and did a blanket um, refund and um, happy to also share the articles um, that the CEO of Airbnb apologized and there's a $62 million um, refund um, uh, package that they are providing. I hadn't heard about the Airbnb one. Yeah. Um, also, you guys, accommodation providers, um, this is a good time for you to look at doing some weekly rates, um, uh, create an isolation package. Even as we come out of self-isolation, people uh, will be a little bit nervous, so it's a good way for you to put together a package. And activity and tour providers, really, really fun. Create a couch version of your activity, share it on social media, take that, um, that little video pop it into um, a blog so you get some Google juice for your website too. Yeah. So the nice thing about brainstorming, you guys, these are just to give you some ideas to get you started. Um, um, get on a Zoom chat or a Skype or whatever with your friends. Get on with your families. Um, I find Shiraz always helps. Um, and and <laughs> um, because no idea is a bad idea. This is just all of us getting together. We're in uncharted territory. Fantastic. And we sure are. So now we think about the who. Yeah, like I said, we were gonna talk about the audiences, right? So the first way to start your content strategy is to choose an audience. Um, and um, the, we're gonna still have our familiar domestic traveler. You're still gonna have those people that wanna go for a romance package. You're still gonna have the budget traveler, the group of friends that are gonna to wanna to go out and the Kiwis that wanna go and outdoor and adventure. But we're anticipating that there's going to be some brand new audiences. And this is what we're calling them at Tomahawk. 
um, the Italian at home couple. So that couple that would normally um, go overseas, they might um, be exploring Europe. They might be explore. They might go on an African safari. So these are a more um, affluent couple travel. Um, couple travel. That didn't sound very good. Um, so what we're trying to say is there's going to be a new influx of luxury domestic travelers. There's also going to be a new influx of um, um, more luxury families. So those families that would normally go overseas, go skiing in Japan, take the kids to Disneyland, they're going to be traveling at home. So there's going to be those more top end um, family packages that you might want to put together. And let's face it, I adore my husband and I wouldn't want to be in lockdown with anybody else, but I'm really missing um, our good friends. Um, so um, we're calling this the double couple. So putting together packages for the double couple for four people is a really great um, piece of content or package you can be putting out in the market. And as we were all showing, one of the things that we wanna do is, is visit our Kiwi family. Um, so domestic VFR, which is visiting friends and relatives is going to be huge. Um, so we believe that business travel will be the first off the mark and second off the mark will be those influx of domestic VFRs. And what does that mean? That means like when I wanna go see my niece in her family in Matamata, instead of just going down for the day, I'm gonna go stay with them for three days and then we're gonna go as an extended family, you know, and go do activities together. Um, so, Getting that Kiwi um, marketing going is going to be important. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so this is another chime. We're trying to find ways that we can kind of communicate since we're all staring at a screen and, and you're just listening to our voices. This is a good time for us to kind of take a pulse on everybody's businesses. In the chat, can you guys share um, BC, so before coronavirus, so BC, how much of your business was actually domestic? Uh, sorry, was actually international. Yeah. So how much of your business, because were you like 50% international business? Were you 75%? So, you know, just try to get a pulse, 80%, yeah. So that's what I mean. We're going to all be having to really kind of, do this mind shit 70%. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, 40%. So some of them, yeah, 100%. So this is going to be a real shift for us, right? We're all going to have to be looking um, at what we can be doing in the domestic market, which is great, right? Really, Kiwis enjoying their own backyard, something we all talked about and kind of complained about for a while. Um, plenty of rumors. Plenty of rumors out there that Tourism New Zealand's going to have to be doing, you know, domestic marketing. Um, and those will probably be more overarching, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, the back your backyard. Um, so it's going to be up to the us as um, tourism businesses and RTOs and everything to, to say, um, to market our region. Um, yeah, Dunedin's just mentioned about cruise. Um, mm, yeah. Be a big, wow. big shift for a lot of, um, of the regions that would traditionally get a, a strong cruise market. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Thanks for sharing. Interesting times. What we'll do is we will actually collect this data and um, yeah, see if there are some trends and share, obviously not individual, but um, share, share some of those trends in that follow up email. And, so that you feel like you're part of um, a wider team of uh, tourism people who are in the same um, position. That made no sense, but we'll share some data so that you can <laughs> use it compared to the others in the industry, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is just a time for all of us to hit that reset, right? Um, we're doing it um, at Tomahawk where everybody's, uh, we're talking to a lot of customers, helping them press their reset button. 
Um, so that's what that giant red button in our face is all about. <laughs> so, oh, scooting too fast. So if we look at types of content, so Jean has touched on some really great brainstorming ideas. She's talked about who we could be talking to, whether it's traditional markets that we were engaging with, or potentially for some of us, and based on those comments, a lot of us, some new markets that we might be looking at targeting. What sort of content can you be putting into market to engage with these people? So I'm not going to read through all of these, but some fantastic ideas here. Um, one of my favorite is, are freebies, and it's not necessarily that you've got to give away pr your product or service um, for free, but think about who you've got in your business that is... Uh, it might be that you have a cafe or a restaurant or a hotel and you've got a team of chefs or um, you've even just got some budding bakers in your team and you want to start creating some content around recipes that you want to give away for free. Um, equally, podcasting is a really great, fun way of engaging with people. Those who work with me know that I love podcasts. Um, and this is an opportunity to interview potential um, or some past past guests, it could be that you interview staff, others in the industry, and start to put some content out that way. Um, so yeah, like I say, some seeds for, for you here that we can plant, and based on the concept and the audience, you can kind of mix and match, which we'll talk about next. Yeah, I was just um, thinking, um, because I saw that our friends um, Fai Kaupo, um b and and Taupo um, are on this. Mm -hmm. um, Angie is a phenomenal baker and, um, and just a really, just beautiful food. And so, for example, what a B&B &B can do that normally um, deals with the, you know, with agents and the international traveler is try to tap into that um, luxury couple or luxury family um, that would normally go overseas to try new food and, and stuff is, is use those freebies, um, sharing your recipes. Um, and you can, as you said, Renee, use the different types of content. You can do time-lapse video. You can share the actual recipe itself. And that helps to set up um, and get your brand in front of and get people thinking about coming to stay with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is that content building table. So besides getting a copy of this webinar, everybody, you're going to be, um, you're going to get a content building um, table and um, an, a, a, another worksheet. So our whole idea is not to be death by PowerPoint, just talking at you, but actually be able to give you tools so you can, you know, as we say, get shit done and focus on your business. And so this is a really um, small example of, of how, you, how creating a content strategy works. You create your audience. And in this example, we're using the um, Italy home couple. We talked about that you wanna create content for that dream stage. So what could it look like? Oh, you can create the theme as a food and art of Rotorua. And because it's in the dream stage, the dream stage is best powered um, by images and video. So you could create a slideshow, right? So what could you do for the uh, Italian home couple for the research stage? You could create the top five historic locations in Rotorua and that's strictly a blog. So just reading through that, that gives you guys an idea on how it works. You take your audience, you take your theme, what type of content, your theme, and what kind of um, content. And that's how it works. And then you just get onto it, right? Yeah, fantastic. And so what happens is you start scheduling your, um, your content strategy. And that's the planner that we're gonna be um, following up this webinar recording with that we're gonna send you. Um, to get started, there's some really neat tools because all we're gonna be giving you is a, um, is a calendar with a key that you use. And what you're gonna wanna do is um, add in any of the New Zealand holidays into that because you might wanna write about those. Um, Promo has a really fun calendar that they update every single month that has all the different international holidays, which kind of gives you a spark and some ideas that you can incorporate. But here's the thing, you have to be really patient with yourself when you're creating content. Even though I've been doing this for cough, cough, 26 years, um, 
it still takes a lot of time. You know, it took Renee and I two days to put together what we wanted to include um, in this webinar. Um, and then it, you know, then we needed, um, you know, one of our design team to help and then another team to proofread it. And so it takes time. So give yourself, um, be patient with yourself. Um, we've all got days at home. It's not 28 days anymore. It's already counting down. Um, but it is a really great time for you to, uh, to, to, to beef up your business with this little focus that you can be working on. Yeah, definitely. And understanding that just because the content that you're creating with, let's say, your hyper-local market in mind around um, top five places to have breakfast, for example, doesn't mean that that content's not going to be relevant to the audiences as they grow wider. And then again, as we start to see international travelers traveling again, it's still relevant for them as well. So don't feel that the content that you're creating now isn't going to have a life after this. Yeah, it's good going to definitely be able to be repurposed. You can reshare it, but targeting a different audience, you might change some of the um, the language or the copy to, to align with that. But yeah, don't feel that just because you're currently focusing on a audience A, it's not relevant for audience B. You'd be surprised at how a lot of this content can be repurposed um, or actually just pushed out as it is to a di completely different audience. And just because you've read it seven times, it doesn't mean that their audience has read it seven times. It'll be new to them as well. Nice. Um, so that's something to think about as well. And Georgina has just mentioned that um, Planoly, and I love Planoly, um, but they have marketing calendars available. Um, so we will talk about tools next, which I'm about to switch to. Um, but that's a little tip that came in from the crowd. So it was perfect timing, and I did not plant that, but we are now going to tell you about some great free tools that we use um, and would recommend you checking out. So Grammarly is one of those great free tools, and this, you've probably seen ads for this, to be honest, but it, it really is, as it sounds, a grammar checker. Um, it's super user-friendly and easy to use. User friendly and easy to use, of course. It makes, yep. Um, and you can add it as a plugin to your browser. Um, Canva is the best. It is a tool that you can create content with. It comes with some amazing templates for Facebook posts, for Instagram stories. Um, even for flyers and menus and, and things like that. So there's a free version. You can pay a little bit extra for a paid version. Um, both are amazingly great to use. So definitely go over and check that out. So that's mostly for the visual content, right? So like taking a picture and putting images or... Yeah, text so over taking images. Taking yeah. images and putting text and... Yeah. yeah creating collages, things like that. Yeah, um, they have a whole heap of free little elements that you can layer over and, and whatnot. My one tip, if I was to put like a branding hat on, um, don't go too crazy and get excited by all the little bits you can add on. Make sure it still aligns with your brand um, and it's consistent with your brand. Anyway, that's my little segue. Um, promo is fantastic video tool. Um, as Gina pointed out before, they do have great calendars to be using. They also have some fantastic templates. Um, this has a free and a paid version. So again, go in, play with the free version, and then um, you can pick and choose from there. Remembering you guys that video, so if an image speaks a hundred words, video speaks a thousand um, images. So anybody can make a video with promo. Um, and so we highly recommend that you, you jump in and, and give it a go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Platograph. So this is a really fun tool that takes a still image and you can animate an element of it. You've possibly seen variations of this. I know that my Instagram at the moment seems to be spammed with um, these tools and it creates, it's a really great way of creating easy thumb stopping content and it can be as simple as taking a still image of somebody pouring a glass of wine for example and then you animate the, the wine that's being poured into the glass. Um, equally so it might be a beautiful landscape image and there might be some clouds in the background and you can animate those moving 
in one direction and pretending that you're there taking a video. Um, you know, if we even used one of these um, on one of our websites, right? Um, if, if you look at Ahapara, um, because they didn't want to do a video on their website like everybody else, we took a really moody picture and then um, just had the water um, moving. And um, so don't think that these are just for social media. These are things that, and content that you could be adding to your website, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, VSEO, this one's been around for a long time. It's a great photo editing tool. There's not a link here because it's actually an app. So if you jump over to the Play Store or um, the App Store, you can actually just download it straight from there. Um, Google Search Console has a, a fantastic keyword research tool. So jump in and have a look. Um, this should be connected to your website. So if you get stuck on in this area, um, reach out to your agency or your web web provider and they'll be able to help you with that. And then HubSpot have this um, fun little blog topic generator and you literally pop some some keywords in and it will spit five ideas out for free. Um, <laughs> it's a, it, yeah, it's a little quirky. Um, it has things like uh, compare this to that or five create a list of five things. And it's just a nice reminder that blog writing doesn't need to be daunting. Um, it will break it down. It's an opportunity for you to feel like um, you can tick something off relatively simply in this area without feeling overwhelmed. So it, yeah, have a bit of fun, jump in and see what comes out. So understanding that the domestic audience is possibly going to be a new audience for a lot of you, um, TIA have got a tool called Digit. Um, it has been around for some time. The data is, I'm going to say, Gina, am I correct in saying five years old now? Mm, no, it's not that old. I think it's, oh, three, four, I think it's, I think it's three or four. Okay. But, yeah. I'm trying to think of how long I've been with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the data is about, let's say four years old. However, it's still very relevant in terms of getting an idea about the audiences available. Um, we did do a webinar with TIA, which we will share with you all. Um, and it just talks about some similar things to what we've covered today, but also a little bit of extra um, tips and tricks around social media. And if you haven't used Digit before, um, and this is your first dive into um, domestic audiences, um, please do check it out. Okay, we're about to wrap it up, you guys. Um, just again, focus on what you can do. Um, and um, I'm going to ask you to click again, Renee. <laughs> and that is to get your website fitness up. That's what we all can be doing right now. Um, Create those new domestic products if you don't already have them. And create that content for your site to impress um, the domestic travel and Google and get those search results working in your favor so your business is ready to rebound and is being seen. And together we will all get through this. Um, because I'm not going to do it. Sing it. Sing it. <laughs> because it's a whole new world. Um, <laughs> because it is, you guys, it's a whole new world. Um, and we're in it together. Let's um, hit that reset button um, and um, keep our thinking caps on to keep our businesses thriving in this new world. Fantastic. And 100% keep your thinking caps on and remember that this is an opportunity for us to care about each other, be really creative, have conversations with each other. The fact that you all came and joined us today um, and mostly listened to Gina and I speak, shared with others what's happening in your, um, in your industry, oh, sorry, within your business around what percentage comes from international um, was really important today working with each other, collaborate. Don't be afraid to reach out to other industry operators within your region or outside of your region. Um, yeah, this is the time really for all of us as an industry to do a mind shift from the, the competitive attitude um, to the collaborative attitude. So we, 
um, it's really a time where we just need to go, okay, how about if I make a package for my activity with the local cafe, with the local um, accommodation, with the local, uh, you know, Uber driver. It's really a time where we all just need to be creative and collaborate, right? I mean, it's all we keep doing, right, Renee? Definitely. It sure is. So we've got a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to ask a couple of the questions that have come through. If you have got questions and we don't have time to answer them all, honestly, please feel free to fire them through and we will answer them in, uh, in that follow-up email that we send. Um, alternatively, of course, Gina and I are available outside of this to talk, brain bounce and answer questions. So do please feel free to reach out. Um, but because we've got time, I'm going to ask two questions. Um, one, we are currently having a new website made. Is it st still a good thing to add more content to the old one? Uh, <laughs> I guess that also depends on when the new site um, is, is going to be launched. Um, is that a fair comment, Renee? It, it depends on how far down the, um, the, path, yeah. the, the path that you are. Yeah. Um, and look at any site you put on the old site, um, your website company will or should put in redirects so yep. that um, it redirects to any new page on your site. So you won't be wasting your time if you put content on your old site. Um, the only reason why I started off by saying how far down the path you are is because um, if there's different format and setup with the content between the two sites. Um, I wouldn't stop. What, I'm, what, what, my, what our advice would be is just don't pause on creating content right now. Whether it goes on your old site or your new site, just keep creating content. Yeah. Do you want to add to that, Renee? No, that was pretty much where I would have gone as well. Um, just as FYI, Gina, I didn't tell you who it was, but we're building the website. So that's... Oh. <laughs> So yes, we will be putting in redirects and um, the site's going live in May. But yes, 100% don't pause, continue to write content. It's re really important and that content can be um, pushed across the new site as well and redirects can be put in place. So let me just, yeah, let me just uh, make a comment on that um, in the sense that just because that question um, was a, a Tomahawk customer, and by the way, I can't see, um, I can't see those. Um, please understand that we are 100% here to collaborate. Um, we've been reaching out to, to other um, agencies um, in the tourism industry um, to see how we can collaborate that with them too. Because right now, it's all about us brain bouncing and really um, focusing on how we can all work together. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question of Tomahawk and you're not a customer, feel like you can ask us and we're not going to chase you to become a customer. We actually really are here just to help because we need the industry to be thriving in order for us to thrive. So we're all in this together. Yeah, so definitely. please, if you have a question, feel like you can ask us and you're not going to be bombarded with a sales call or a sales email. I just want to say that. Yeah, no, good, good point. Thank you, Gina. Um, so one more question. How important is LinkedIn? Ooh, really important. <laughs> um, LinkedIn is really, really important, you guys. Even if you do not do B2B, so even if you don't do business to business um, um, products, so even if, you know, if you're a hotel that does conferences, then that's considered B2B. Even if you're not that, when you, when you publish articles or do posts on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is considered an authority one um, um, link for Google. So any content you do online, it doesn't have to just be on your website. Um, any content you do online is helping your online presence. So please be active, write articles, do posts, do posts and link them back to your website. LinkedIn, um, what a great question. Yep, no offense, yeah. and I knew that you'd like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right we're a little bit over time so we better uh, let people get back to their days 
Yes, definitely. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, for everyone who, like I say, registered and answered, asked questions, we will share the answers to those in the follow-up email. Um, we will be looking to do more webinars. So if there are any topics that you would like help with, please let us know and we will do our best to help you out with those. So again, huge thank you. Thank you, Gina, for joining me today. And thank you to all the T-Hawks out there listening um, as well. But huge thanks. Have a great day and have a fantastic Easter because, of course, we've got a short week and it's Easter. So enjoy. <laughs> Here, Kaha, everyone.